everybody. This is Terry Nance. Welcome to Armor Bear Awakening. I know that God's favor and grace is upon you today. Just begin to worship him and thank him for it. If you enjoy the broadcast, be sure to subscribe. If uh, if you are interested in the books, material, my coaching program, go to godsarmorbear.com. If you'd like for me to come into your church, go there and fill it out. Send it to me. I'd love to come in your area and do a conference for you. Uh, God is really speaking today, Armor Bear Awakening. Uh, there, there truly is a move of the spirit, which is quickening the body of Christ to begin to connect under their leadership. The Bible is very clear in Ephesians chapter four, I believe it's verse 25. God gave, first of all, the apostles, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. That is the fivefold ministry gift. These are the governing, got what I call the government of God, the governing gifts of the body of Christ. You've got the Father, Son, you've got the Holy Spirit. From there, God puts this fivefold ministry to direct the body of Christ. And they are there. And in that, you're going to have the pastor who feed, who really is going to shepherd a flock of people. And it may be a prophet. It could be, a t- and especially a, pro- a pastor is always going to be a teacher. But these gifts are there sent by God. I like what Billy Graham said when they said, why don't you run for president? And he said, why step down? So you've got to see that office is not elected by men. And so it's elected by God. So we should honor and bless and serve and allow these men and women of God to be our spiritual fathers and mothers. And that really is what is happening today. I, I really feel there's a move of the spirit because there's such, we live, we live in a fatherless generation. I, the fivefold ministry has to move into me the greatest gift. Ephesians 5 1 says this, we are to model God as dear children and love the way Jesus loves. So if I'm to model God, that, that's, that's not a suggestion. That's a commandment. So if I'm to model God, then how do I model God? Well, I know that when I go to God, I don't go into prayer and say, God, you know, no, you know what I say? Father. That's what Jesus told us to pray. When you go into prayer, go in your closet, shut the door, pray to your father who seeth in secret. Your father seeth in secret will reward you in the open. So he's father. So the greatest gift that I can, even though I stand in the office of a pastor and a teacher, and I have a very strong apostolic anointing on my life, the thing is, is the greatest gift that I can be as a father. And that is to father and sow into the lives of others to increase them. Now, I've been talking about longevity. We're talking about bloom where you're planted. And I'm on page number 33 right here in the Armor Bear book. And so I trust you'll get it. This is book number two, Bloom Where You're Planted. And I've talked about many keys to longevity. And here's another one, patience and flexibility. Patience is another key to longevity. I'm going to read some of this. Patient means the suffering of afflictions, pain, toil, calamity, uh, uh, provocation, or other evil with a calm, unfurled temper. Now, that's a great definition. To be calm in the midst of a storm. That is what patience is. Because right now, the devil, uh, he's doing a good job, I will say that. He is stirring up the chaos and the drama. We've never seen so much drama and so, so, so many broken and emotional broken people and hurting people. And so in that, we got to have patience with these people. Patience means enduring without murmuring or without fretting. That means when, when I am called to an assignment and I am fulfilling that assignment and I don't see the fruit that I, that I desire. I have to have patience. I have to have rest and calm. And you know, I have to put it on the Lord. This is where you have to trust God and allow the Holy Spirit to, to show you where you've missed it. Or, Hey, it's just, you got to stand, stand having, uh, done all to stand, stand is what Paul said in Ephesians chapter six. Or it is the act or the quality of waiting long for justice and expected good without discontentment. Romans 12, verse 6 and 7. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, 
Uh, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to our faith. Our ministry, let us wait on our ministry. I've had uh, individuals come to me and they're like, you know, I'm getting me a card. I know God's called me out and I've just got to go out and promote myself. And I tried to sit them down and say, hang on, that's not how this operates. And they challenged me. No, I think you're missing it. I know I, I have to do some things. And so I said, all right, we'll be blessed because here's the truth. As a pastor, if you walked in my church and I didn't know you, here's the thing that I know. That is God told me to know those who labor among me. So I, I've got to know you. I, so you can't just come in and say, I have a prophetic gift and uh, give me a pulpit. No, that's that's called a false prophet. No, you've got to, number one, you got to be an armor bearer. Just cut it all out and quit trying to promote an office or a title. <laughs> you don't need a title. Now, you've heard me say this, but, you know, I, sometimes prophets just, I mean, in our movement, gosh, they're everywhere. One day someone said to me, oh, Brother Terry, there's a new prophet in the house. And I said, go tell them this is a nonprofit ministry. Because I was so tired of that, even though I, I have to be careful. I don't want to be critical of it, but it's very important that we understand it's our character and the word of God in us and our ability to serve and to be patient through difficult times. Just because you don't get a coffee break every 30 minutes of work for 15 minutes, you got to realize, uh, you're, you're not, you're not using your grace. You're, you're not, you're not pressing forward. Life is not easy. There's nothing easy about it, but we have to look beyond what life has to offer and look into the spirit and live in Christ. And we have joy. We have joy no matter whether life is profitable for us at this moment, but it will be profitable as we put our trust in God and we kick the grace of God in. Kick that grace in your life and watch what happens. Father, I bless and I release your joy today in everyone. Something good is going to happen to you.